from the Flip Floppy in Lamu, where we are building a 24 meter recycled plastic sailing dhow from all the plastic we have here. <laughs> in the previous video, we showed you how we made our solar module to help us to melt the plastic parts we need for the boat. And basically, our recycling setup is prepared now. So, in this video, we will show you how we collected, sorted, shredded, and prepared all the plastic so that we can then recycle it into parts of the boat. So we have Hanna and Abdul here. They're from Taka Taka Heroes, cleaning up Lamu, yeah? Yeah, we try. So Hanna, maybe you can quickly say what Taka Taka, Taka, Taka Heroes <laughs> <laughs> mission is. Okay, we want to see a clean Lamu and we want to work with the community to make that happen. Cool, that's good. So I guess one thing is uh, cleaning up together, right? How do you do that? So the way that we kick-started community partnership was by our Hota Plastiki competition where it was a, we offered cash prizes for the teams that collected the most plastic and in one month we collected 25 tons of plastic and had over um, 250 people take part. Wow, that's a lot. So that's where most of the plastic on the site comes from, right? For now, yes. And other means of collecting plastic, we also uh, organize regular cleanups with the communities around and uh, the local organization that we have from the search, Shela. And Manda Tiger Project. They supply us with their plastic, and that's how we get the plastic around Lamb. We have a lot of challenges. <laughs> the major one is the transport. I uh, believe our site is an asket of Lamb, so if we do the collection here, we have to organize for a tractor to move the plastic to our site and that's costly a lot. Yeah. And uh, we have to also to look at the tides. If we are to transport with the boat, we have to find out the high tides, when is the high tides. And sometimes the donkeys get to eat the, the plastic uh, that are meant to be transported to our site. So it's like a frustrating and now once we have a proper means of transporting, I think it would be a good start for us as well. Next step to do more cleanups, engage the community more, but also do a pilot um, collection, house collection scheme. So where we collect from houses and we work that out and expand that poly poly. How is it financially? Is that all volunteering at the moment? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is a good point to mention that all of our activities are basically volunteer run and we are constantly trying to look for funding here and there. But one very good way to support this is on Patreon. So um, there you can uh, contribute with small contributions per month. Um, so let's say one ice cream per month. So yeah, definitely go on Patreon and check out if you can be one of our Patreon Flip Floppy family. Thank you. So yeah, we're very connected with Flip Floppy building the boat and making the network and um, all the other stuff we do and the, with Taka Taka Heroes really setting up that local um, waste management program and um, collecting the plastic we will need for the boat. So making this plastic collection competition was a really effective way to get all this plastic here um, but now this is only one part of the process now we have to uh, sort it, shred it, wash it and actually put it into a shape that we can recycle it and Luckily, we have our recycling expert here, Morris, who was actually very heavily involved in manufacturing the part of the flip flop in Dogo, the first 9 meter prototype we already built. Okay, it all starts from the collection, from the dub, from the dub side, or from where you have got them, they always make what you call a complete eat. From the eat, you have to sort. Sort, not only sort family wise, you also sort color wise. You are PET as a family. This PET. 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 The biggest mess in our side today. That's the first sound of identification. PET, even if you fold at any angle, it will never leave a mark. Then you go to HDPE. It is a family on its own. It will have its own colors. You put the colors on their own. HDP means high intensity poly polyethylene. We call them the blow because the mode that is used here is the blow. That's why we use it. Now, this is the brother to this. This is LDPE. This is HDPE. PVC as a family. This is PVC. Most means once you melt it, it gives out the red gas. It's helpful. Okay. PP is a family on its own. 
with its different colors. You have red PP, black PP, whatever the colors are. This is PP. This and this are the same family. This one does not have a line. They don't have a line. This one you can fold it in any name. This one will break. It's still what? Still PP. Still what? And you have also the ABS and PS, they also have their own colors. So this ABS. This one is very noisy, it almost looks like glass. It's just a simple fold. Just go. Hmm. But this one is a mess inside. Nobody recycles electronic casing waste. Now this one is the biggest ender. These big companies they have no problem. How those ones they have no problem. You can identify them easily because the marks are there. But the small parts here, the marks are not there. Uh, these ones are very many. What happens if you don't sort the types? When you don't sort for recycling, it means your product cannot go back to mainstream polyam. Mm. Why? Because your, pro you, you, your product that is sorted and crushed becomes unrecognizable. We cannot classify it. Mm. That means not only have you created a mess from the dub side, you have created a mess in the sorting to a, a product that cannot go back to the cycle of recycling. Now, after you sort those colors, now logic demands you grind those colors that you fear mixing them may not be able to, to, to get the original color back. You grind gray and black together. White goes on its own. Green and blue goes on their own. Each one goes on their own. But in between every crash, you flash with white. Black, as I said, is always the last component. Once you grind it, we weigh. You shred roughly around between 700 to 800 kgs. PT plus or minus half a ton. It's always a red market. Good sorted plastic. The market is always there. Asante sana, Morris. Thank you, Katrina. <laughs> so with the big shredder, we can make big flakes. And we also have a small shredder, which is a fresh plastic shredder, that open source design shredder. You can build it yourself. Um, and with this shredder, we can make small plastic flakes, which is perfect for the small extrusion machine we have for our tests at the moment. So this is what we'll use. This shredder plastic is what we'll use for our tests. In the next video, we will show you how, uh, all the tests we did with our solar and extrusion setup. And actually, for the patrons, we already have the results um, online. So you could, if you are interested, def definitely check out our Patreon page where we release some more up-to-date um, updates. <laughs> yeah, that is for this video. Have a good time wherever you are, and uh, see you in the next video. Anything you want to say, you to your public, worldwide audience of millions of viewers. He wants to <laughs> 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 Okay, he wants to say that. <laughs>